six beginner mistakes that I made and you should avoid starting now. Hey, it's Danielle at Wendell Woodworks, and today I'm gonna to share with you some mistakes that I made to help save you from pulling your hair out. My learning curve was a little bit rough. Hopefully by sharing this, I'll help some of you starting out from making the same mistakes. So let's do a countdown starting with number six, don't drive on your corners. Using a scroll saw is a bit like driving a car. Even to make a straight line, you constantly have to drive your piece and steer it to keep it going the right way. Whenever I got to a corner, I just assumed that I had to keep driving as I turned and therefore my corners always got off track and rounded over. Eventually, I figured out that you don't always have to drive when you're steering. When you get to a sharp corner, stop driving and simply turn your piece without pushing it. This changes the direction of your blade without cutting and will keep your corners nice and sharp. Number five, don't use bad blades. I had a Porter Cable scroll saw sitting in my garage for years without knowing what it could really do. And when I would experiment with it, I would just use the pinned blades that it automatically came with. They were large, they were aggressive, they would only cut in one direction, which would leave the bottom always a mess, and more times than not, it would always break the piece that I was working on. I hated to scroll saw because of this. I don't know why I kept coming back, but I did, and I'm glad I did, because then I discovered pinless blades. And there is meaning to the madness of the numbers on scroll saw blades. I already did a video that goes a little bit more in depth on this, but I will tell you that my overall favorites are the Olsen Double Reverse Tooth Blades and the Pegasus Modified Geometry Blades. You can find all of those in my description below, and I normally start with a number five blade. If the blade is cutting too fast or inaccurately, that means that you need to size your blade down. If you're having trouble getting through your material or it's burning your material, that means you need to size your blade up. Number four, don't forget to check your tension. Like I mentioned, I started out with a Porter cable and I just recently upgraded to the Pegasus. With expensive scroll saws like the Pegasus, you don't really have to worry about the tension. It's automatically set for you. With my Porter cable, I had to adjust the tension every time I put a new blade in and every time I would reset it. It has to be tight enough to cut straight and to cut down on the vibration, but it also can't be too tight that it makes your blade slip out of the thumb screws. It can be a frustrating thing until you find the magic that allows you to use your scroll saw at its best. If you are having trouble with your tension and you need help in that area to use your pinless blades, drop me a comment and reach out to me and I'll let you know what worked for me and hopefully it'll help you. Number three, don't use the wrong materials. What project you're doing and the look that you're going for will always dictate what materials you use. And once you get experience with all sorts of different materials, nothing will be off the table. But I will say that if you're just starting out, using too thin of materials like quarter inch plywood can be very frustrating for you as it will break fairly easily, both while cutting and while finishing. If you're scrolling out words for signs, especially a thin font, my go-to is always MDF. Quarter inch MDF even is very strong and can withstand the cuts and turns far better than plywood. It's also a consistent cut and will give you a far easier time. I didn't know what MDF was when I first started and that's something I wish I had known. Number two, don't downplay your air compressor or forget to wear a mask. The saw that I started with had a broken air compressor, so the dust would just pile on by the saw and made it so difficult to see the lines of my templates. Some of the cheaper models will not come with an air compressor, so I recommend if you're looking into a saw, make sure that it has an air compressor or find some way to blow the dust off while you're cutting and don't forget to wear a mask. I'm gonna be honest with you, I didn't wear a mask for a long time and I never felt good afterwards. It's a lot of dust, it's not good for you. I wear a mask now. And number one, don't give up, it gets better. Four years ago, I thought the scroll saw was awful. It was loud, it was dusty, I didn't really like it. But I kept coming back, mainly because I was a mom with two kids under two, and I was desperate for a brain break, even if it meant turning out the world with something loud and something dusty. I'm really glad I didn't give up. There is a learning curve for sure, and it takes time to figure out your specific scroll saw, what blades go with what material, but if you keep at it, you'll get to see really neat rewards that come through making something of your own, and hopefully you have a great time with it. If you liked this video, check out some of my other ones. Those are my six things, and I hope that they help you to get started. As always, feel free to shoot me any questions you may have along the way. I'd love to help you in any way that I can. Happy scrolling!